So in this video, we will talk about resistors in series. In other words, what happens when you connect resistors end to end and how do you calculate the equivalent total resistance? So this one is pretty straightforward and you don't really need to make it more complicated than it is. If you have two resistors connected in series like this with resistance values R1 and R2, then the equivalent or total resistance, so if I draw a box around these two resistors and want to measure the total REQ resistance between those two endpoints, so if I connected a multimeter or measurement device to those two external terminals, then that equivalent resistance REQ is simply R1 plus R2. More generally, if I have N resistors in series, so say R1, R2 connected up to R n, where n is some integer, so it could be 10, 100, 1,000, whatever, then r n is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of r n. If you haven't seen summation notation before in a math class, don't worry about it. You can also just think about that like writing it out like this, r1 plus r2 plus blah 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 plus r n. So all it is is adding up all of the resistances to find the equivalent total resistance REQ. And oops, I just realized, of course, this should be an REQ there and not an RN. So there we go, REQ. So say, for example, you are given a problem with known resistor values. Say I have a 100 ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor, and you were asked to solve for the equivalent resistance. That is pretty straightforward. It's just REQ equals R1 plus R2, which in this case is 100 ohms, plus 47 ohms, which is 147 ohms. I think really the only thing to look out for there is units if you are dealing with resistors with dramatically different values. So for example, say I have a one kilo ohm resistor and a 47 ohm resistor, then REQ there is not 48 ohms because then I, I forgot to pay attention to the kilo prefix on this one. REQ there is one kilo ohm plus 47 ohms, which is 1000 ohms plus 47 ohms, which is 1047 ohms, if we are not really worried about significant digits or the tolerance on the resistors, which we haven't really talked about yet. So again, just be careful, don't make simple math mistakes and ignore your prefixes. Make sure you are doing that correctly and it's pretty simple to get the right answer. Now, while this is pretty simple if you are just given the resistor values and asked, asked to calculate the equivalent resistance, what's probably more likely to happen is that you will be designing a circuit and calculate that you need some target or desired resistance value. So say you are doing something and you decide that you need a 500 ohm resistor for something, but you only have 100 ohm resistors. And then again, I'm just making the math pretty simple here to make this one easy. Then clearly you can make a 500 ohm resistor by combining five 100 ohm resistors in series because these resi resistances just add. So for example, I connect all five of these 100 ohm resistors in series. Then the total equivalent resistance of this whole unit REQ is the sum from I equals one to five of RN, where RN is just 100 each time, so that's going to be 500 ohms. So again, usually what will happen in a laboratory setting is you will have a kit with resistors of certain values. We haven't talked about resistor color code values yet, but for example, it might be something like, and the values are kind of funky, which has some historical reasons related to the tolerance. You might wonder why these aren't all nice round numbers, but something like 22 ohms, 47 ohms, 68 ohms, 100 ohms, maybe 150, 220 instead of 200. Again, they're not always the values you might exactly think. The next one's 330, 470. So they're not always nice round numbers, the values you think they would be, but if you have a target value, you can 
add these up to get close to that value depending on what values you have available. You can also combine resistors in parallel, which we are going to discuss in the next video, which allows you to achieve an even greater range of values given the fixed values that resistors are available in. And I apologize again, I just realized I'm getting sloppy with my notation. This here should be an R subscript I, and I think I had that wrong on the last slide too. So that should be an RI, and let's go back and check. This should be an RI up here as well. Again, that's just me being a little lazy with the summation notation, but I think you got the idea. There we go, RI. So you go from I equals one up to N and plug in the different values for I there when you're doing the addition.